Hola mi gente, welcome back to my channel and I am thrilled, I am so thrilled for today's video. It's not even funny. <laughs> I've been wanting to post this for a really long time now and I'm very excited about it. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I am obsessed with everything personal finance. I am so passionate about it, like intensely passionate about it. So this is the first of many videos to come where I'm gonna be sharing about how I've paid off debt and at the same time been saving money. I'm gonna call this my money series. So I want my channel to be a mix of fun, adventurous, yummy, delicious recipes, but also informative, essential things. So this series of videos will be about all things money, personal finance, truly building the wealth that you deserve, getting out of debt, and living life on your terms. Specifically, I wanted to begin this series, how budgeting has been essential to my debt payoff journey, and most importantly, how I've been saving, and not just saving, saving for retirement. It's important. Okay, so let's talk about big picture stuff. One of my goals as a Latina woman in her late 20s is to build wealth for future generations. We are typically the first generations of our family to go to college. We are typically working more high level jobs than the woman in past generations. It is up to us, frankly, to create wealth and build something on the sacrifices and successes of our families. I have somewhat of an interesting money story. I was raised on principles of being responsible with my finances since I was a little kid. Being raised in the Dominican Republic by a single mother of two, my mom always showed my sister and I how hard work is essential to any success. And when living in Dominican Republic, she had four to five jobs just to make sure all her bills were paid on time and that there was food at the table at the end of every single day. Once we moved to the States, my mom began educating my sister and I about the importance of saving, building credit, and always paying your bills on time. And she highlighted that with intensity. Always pay your bills on time. Now, credit was taught to me as a good thing as long as you have the money to pay for that balance when that bill comes around. My mom actually pushed me, or let's say encouraged me, to apply for a credit card as soon as I had my first job and I opened up my first bank account. And I remember this was around 11th and 12th grade. So I remember I was applying to all the shops where I was shopping at during that time. Old Navy, American Eagle, Target, Hollister, I believe, and a gas card. Finally, after applying to a bunch of different credit cards, being denied because I didn't have the credit, I finally got some interesting mail. And it was a bank offering me a student credit card. So I applied and voila, I was accepted with my first credit card of $300. Wow. I was so excited because as a high schooler, 300 bucks, damn, sounds pretty good. So once college came around, I unfortunately had to take on my first student loan debt. I remember it was my second or third year of college where financial aid was not giving me anything anymore because I had already started my full-time job. I needed the extra money to pay for my remaining tuition and fees and to pay for the expensive books and college materials that are super expensive. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did accept an extra amount of money to spend. And that unfortunately is where everything started as far as my student loan debt. So despite everything my mom taught me what not to do, I still went ahead and made my own money mistakes. I ended up with credit card debt and student loan debt just for being irresponsible. Now during college, I was obsessed with shopping, going out, going out to dinner with friends, movies, I remember I wanted really expensive glasses, I wanted clothes, traveling. That's when everything started to go downhill. But for me, despite all that was taught to me about money, I still went off and got myself into debt. 
and that was my choice. I knew what I shouldn't have been doing. So whether your parents did or didn't teach you about money, at a certain point, you kind of realize what you should or shouldn't be doing. So things are now in your control. You now have the power to make the decision to take on debt, stay in debt, or get out of debt and build wealth. Despite whatever has happened in the past, it's up to us now to move forward and become successful with our money. I wanna put a disclaimer out there. I am not claiming to be a certified financial planner or any kind of expert when it comes to personal finance. All I want to do is share my journey with you and my experience on how budgeting has helped me pay off lots of debt and saved lots of money. I also want to show everyone how we can view money as a place of power and not a place of fear. So now let's talk specifics as far as my plan. I started my financial journey at the beginning of this year, January 2020. I started it off with debt. This includes credit card debt, student loan debt, car debt, travel. I also moved into my first apartment two years ago and with that came debt as well. As of September 2020, which is now this month, I am proud to say that I have paid more than half, yes, and saved during the whole time. Now you might ask, how the heck did she do this? Well, let me tell you, using these five steps. One, budgeting paycheck to paycheck. So I consider myself a paycheck budget. Paycheck to paycheck budget is pretty much what it sounds like. <laughs> Every time you get paid, you sit down and create a plan. Why I like this plan? It forces me to sit down and evaluate my finances frequently. It's allowed me to manage my money, little bits and pieces at a time. I've avoided running out of money at the end of the month. Finally, it's helped me gain a better understanding of where my money is going. Two tracking my spending. So in short, the main reason I like to track my spending is to identify and eliminate wasteful spending habits. A bunch of us are guilty of that. Consistently tracking your expenses will help you maintain control of your finances and promote better habits like saving or investing. Three, using the cash envelope system. Now, this system is ideal for overspenders like myself. Yes, this system is very tangible. Basically what it is, you use cold, hard cash to control your spending. You run out, you stop spending. Basic, that's it. That's all you need to do, that's all you need to know. <sighs> the best part of this system is that it actually works. If you are only paying for things using cash and you run out of cash, you cannot overspend. This system will help you stay in tune with your budget because you'll be reminded of it every single time you reach for an envelope to spend from. Four paying off debt using the avalanche method. Basically with this method, you are focusing first on the one debt that has the highest interest. While doing so, you're making minimum payments on the other debts. I think this has worked out best for me because it's minimizing the amount of interest I'm accumulating while working towards my debt. Other people also use the snowball method, which is where you pay down the smallest amount of debt first and work your way up. Bottom line, pick whichever method is best for your situation and personality. You can also use a combination of the two methods. Number five, develop a savings plan that works for your goals. Right now, my main focus is paying off debt. Right now, my savings plan is working around my debt payment plan. So if you're trying to save or pay off debt, getting your expenses down in your budget should be the first area of attack. Things like packing your lunches, making coffee at home, carpooling. So things like that can help minimize your expenses because once you get your expenses down you have more money to spare for your goals all right guys so that was a very high level summary of how I've been able to pay off debt and save you know having an empty bank account and owing money made me super angsty I was very self-motivated when it came to paying it off quickly and saving as much as I can that is why I'm being super aggressive and super intentional when it comes to my finances saving a ton of money is possible regardless of what you earn paying off debt is possible regardless of what you earn you just have to have a plan you have to stay committed and you have to build in those habits and most importantly do not compare yourself to anyone else do what you can with what you have just because someone makes 100k doesn't mean they have 100k in their savings a lot of times people who make a ton of money are saving very very little or nothing at all so just because you make 40 or 50k a year doesn't mean that you can't save start with a small number or percentage and add on to it every month or every quarter and also before i end this video one thing i do want to mention is that during these nine months i did make money mistakes there was times that i bought things that i shouldn't have 
or I overspent or made a bad purchase decision. At the end of the day, regardless of your mistakes, you have to figure out where you went wrong, take the lessons that you've learned and apply them to the next step. You have to keep going. You can't allow yourself to stay down or stuck. So that is my intro to this very informative yet essential video. I will be making more videos with a more in-depth take on each step that I mentioned today. If you have any questions about anything at all that I mentioned in this video, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at Nikki Disla. If you have any comments, you can comment down below, a like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you the next time. So this Jobs. <laughs> Michael La Semina Nanini Lord Voldemort